To start the assembly of this Xbox, I'm going to be attaching the water block to the motherboard. I created this block by soldering an EK server block to a sheet of solid copper. This not only allowed me to retain the factory mounting hardware, but it provided liquid cooling to the console's memory, an area often overlooked on custom water-cooled systems. With the water block attached, I applied the upgraded thermal pads that connected the processor board to the I.O. board through the powder-coated center chassis. I retained the original shielding, cable channels, and antennas, as there wasn't a lot of improvement to be made in these areas. Moving to the power supply, you can see a similar powder coat finish and a new cable poking out the top. This provides 12 volts to a module I designed to sit at the top of the case. This module not only contains many of the added electronics, but also two cooling fans and the reservoir mount. This module integrates with the original power supply mount and bolts directly to the back of the unit. With this connected, I can now attach the power supply to the center chassis, connect all of the cables, and install the remaining shielding and antenna. Now comes the fun part of assembling the loop itself, and I begin by installing this bracket to the 40mm thick EK radiator, followed by all of the fittings. You may notice that I'm not starting with the case, and this is because to make everything fit with room for assembly, I had to make the internal components modular so the entire loop can be built outside of the case. The pump is an Alpha Cool DDC unit that I modified to be slightly smaller and feature a coolant temperature sensor and custom pigtail to reduce cable clutter. This then mounts to the radiator bracket attached earlier, which then attaches to the center chassis using the original heatsink mounting points. With all the water cooling components attached together, I can now install the tubes. These were extremely difficult to make as I chose to use 16mm acrylic tubing inside of this tiny case. Acrylic is notoriously difficult to work with and combined with the large bend radius, it was nearly impossible for me to create the compound bends necessary for this layout. Just to get the tubes you see here, it took over 50 feet of acrylic tubing and numerous bending jigs to land the tubes in just the right spot. I did end up removing the radiator to get everything installed correctly, and I've got to say this build is coming together quite nicely. With the radiator now mounted for the second time, I can route the case thermal sensor and connect the pump and coolant thermal sensor to the power supply hat, which will then interface with the rest of the console through rear mounted magnetic connectors. To manage those thermal sensors, I decided to integrate a Raspberry Pi 4. This is cooled via a passive heatsink and receives airflow from the outer case fans. This is then mounted to a custom bracket, which I will later use to secure it in the console. With that out of the way, I can begin working on my favorite part of this build, the backplate. On the original Series X, the backplate only served to seal off the console. But on my custom Series X, the backplate not only closes everything off, but also contains the entire wiring harness for the console, the internal LED light, and the Raspberry Pi. You may notice some wacky shades with the cable channels, and these were once again a result of the size constraints for this build. I have an entire bin of nearly identical pieces that just didn't quite fit and had to be scrapped. I chose to affix the cable channels to the back plate using exposed hex screws. This securement brings a bit of the functional interior design to the otherwise sleek exterior of the console. The exposed screws also allow everything to be easily taken apart for cleaning or future modification. I can now move on to the case where the only real part to be installed is this board powering the front panel buttons. With that, I can now slide the water-cooled assembly from earlier into the case. The original Series X featured a sort of slide and lock system for the center chassis, and I chose to lean into that design by having my water-cooled version lock into place when installed. At the bottom of the case, I can install the three mounting screws, then flip everything around to slot the disk drive into place. After connecting the SATA and power connectors, I can secure it with the retaining bracket and two screws. This is followed by the front panel ribbon cable. You may notice this small white connector at the top of the case. This is the original fan header, but since I'm no longer using the original fan, I've modified it to not only trigger the relay for all my new parts, but also to send a PWM signal and receive TAC information from the two fans I have mounted on the side of the case. This allows the console to retain full control of the fans, keeping them as quiet as possible. With the console plugged in, I'm able to input 12 volts directly into this connector to power on the pump for filling. Unlike my previous water cool designs, this console features a top mounted reservoir, which was a packaging nightmare but super important for creating the necessary loop volume and allowing space for air to pocket. I chose an opaque gray fluid as it provides a nice contrast to the all black interior of the console. Originally I planned on using a bright green fluid to highlight the original Xbox color scheme, but I opted for this more neutral gray so the internal light could accent the build any color without clashing with the fluid. With the loop filled, I can now install the front USB daughter board and connect it to the motherboard. 
This is by far my least favorite part of the build because I worked so hard to give this console a cable free interior and this silver ribbon cable is not doing me any favors. I looked into a bunch of different options for altering this, but none met my aesthetic or functionality requirements, so I opted to stick with the original. Now that the internals are in place, I can attach the rubber foot to the bottom of the console before securing the remaining section of the original backplate. All that's left now is to slide in the custom backplate we built earlier. This piece is fully connected and secured with magnets, so there are no more pesky cables to deal with. To remove this piece, all you have to do is pull this leather tab here on the back of the console. With that, this Xbox build is complete, and if I press the power button, you can see everything come to life. The display boots in just under a minute and contains four graphs that map the fan speed, coolant temperature, air temperature, and power supply temperature. In the center of these graphs, I added a rotating model of this very Xbox. Tapping the button just above this allows me to adjust the display accent color and the internal LED color, either independently or in tandem. This build took many months and hundreds of revisions to complete, so I want to thank everyone for coming along with me on this journey to build the world's greatest Xbox.